new delivery. It says uh, fragile on the top here. New project for me. I, I'm uh, kind of excited to see how this uh, survived the, the postage. It's just gone from uh, a bit uh, up north from where I live in, um, in Norway, so um, should be fine. Took just about a day to get here, so um, let's see what we have got. A lot of cardboard stuff. It's good. Oh, there's something here. So this is uh, some parts. Looks like there's a pickup. There's a pick guard. Hmm. That's cool. And. Uh, Bridge, some uh, studs for the bridge, knobs, uh -huh. good, so looks like we are uh, unpacking a guitar here, more wrapping, 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 oh, this looks like a guitar part, so one piece, Made it in one piece, fret feels. Yeah, they could need a little uh, round, rounding off on the edges, a bit sharp. So this is an Epiphone and it says Junior. So you might have guessed what kind of guitar this will be. I'm just making a mess here for myself now. Oh, so another box inside the box. A guitar that someone had had as a project to um, probably uh, change color of and, and just uh, given up in the process. Les Paul Jr. that has been sanded down. I think uh, the other owner's plan was to give it a TV yellow finish. So I was kind of hoping that I was able to buff this to, to be okay again, like it is in the original um, color, but I see it's also sanded down to the pure wood here. I'm not sure what to do with this yet. There is a humbucker here um, that belongs to this guitar, but I want to stick a P90 in here. And I have um, asked uh, my friend uh, in England, Mr. Mark Johns from Evil Sheep Guitar Pickups to uh, make me a P90. It will be one with uh, dog ears, uh, black uh, cover. And I think that will be quite cool in this guitar. This will be my project. Um, I still have, can't decide what if I should go for a new finish on this. I would like to see if uh, it's quite sanded. So if I clean it up and see if I can maybe come um, get more of the shine back in this uh, top here. I will order a set of uh, new um, pots uh, and um, probably go for a 50s wiring for this. Let's get to work. So what I'll do, if you have a look at this, this uh, you can see that it's this uh, sanding paper traces uh, all over this uh, surface now. I think I'll be able to polish up again some of the shine and maybe lose this uh, pattern of sanding paper here. All right. Yeah. It doesn't look too promising. Uh, I might need some uh, coarser grain. This is too soft, I guess. It's really too, uh, too deep, the, the sanding uh, traces. Uh, you can see now that I, I, I used uh, a moist uh, cloth. So the shine is, is here. It's possible to get it to with a varnish or, or uh, something that makes it shine a bit. Try and make a. Um, I might do things worse now, but I, I'm hoping that uh, with enough uh, 
rounds of this that I can make it more even. Might have to go with an even coarser grain here. To, I need to do some um, heavier machinery. It's pretty coarse grain here, but I'll, I'll give it a go. Let's try it. Yeah. Okay, it, it really goes deep here. Okay, I need to be a bit careful with that. Be a bit light-handed. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that is it. It's hard to see when it's wet, so I need to let it to dry it up and uh, see. I can't really see the scratches. But it, maybe it's just because it's still kind of wet. I've decided that I will uh, use a stain. This is from uh, Crimson's Guitars. Uh, it's stunning stains. This color is amber, but it uh, really looks very black when I pour it out here. So um, I need to thin it. I have some guitar finishing oil that is uh, clear. And I think I'll just uh, thin it out with that. Ooh. So I'm hoping to be able to make um, Nice stain that is not too dark, just slightly amberish in, in color and um, hopefully that will look okay. I'll put it on in here. Good plan. I think we should just carry on. Oh, maybe I need to do it all over the body. Yeah, why not? Yeah, there you go. It looks quite even and, and nice. Just a small bottle of a sample of that stain. Crimson guitars there for you. All right, I need to clean up this mess. So done with finishing. I think it looks very good. Um, it's kind of sticky still. So I'm hoping that if it's um, get to stay a couple of days that it will harden and uh, not be sticky anymore. Okay, <laughs> so it came out pretty good with the finishing, but it's kind of sticky still after a couple of days. I have decided that I will put a one coating of clear lacquer. I'll take it outside very quick. It's a bit cold, so I hope that will work. Next step for me will be working on the neck. And I can feel that it is a bit sharp on the fret edges here. So I will use this little file here. It has this groove here. So uh, that is for the fret uh, ends. So I guess this is uh, what you can expect from an, uh, this is an Epiphone made in China. It's not that very sharp, but it, I can feel that it's not rounded off very well. If I compare it to this Gibson neck here, this is, uh, you can, it's like butter, it's so smooth. There's no sharpness at all here. So it's a clear difference when I run my fingers over this one. This, uh, it's not so pleasant. 
So I'm hoping to uh, fix that using this and afterwards I use these um, looks like rubbers but they are also from Crimson Guitars and they are a different um, density and uh, I will smoothen the frets with them also. And I will also adjust uh, the heights of the frets to check if there are any one sticking out so I need to fix the, the level, leveling. This is done. Seems smooth now, these fret ends. So what I'll do now is I'll use this fret rocker. This has uh, different length on the sides. This should fit between uh, three uh, frets. And the further you get up the neck, the, the more narrow they get. So you have to shift to, to one that will fit. You can't uh, reach over four because then it won't rock. If one was higher now, you would hear it rock. How you can hear it? That means that this fret in the middle here is uh, needs uh, to be put further down because it's higher as long as this, this will rock between this and this. This means that this is too high. And that will cause the string also to fret out, so I need to adjust that. So I will start with marking the, the frets that needs adjustment. Yeah. So this fret needs to come down. Also this slightly. A tendency here. Okay, then I'll start with uh, this one. Just give it a good. And it's not rocking. Next. Yes, this one needs to come down a bit. worked now they should be even and play well I'll give them a, a bit of a polish also with these so I go from this to this and uh, finish off with the hardest one and I uh, and they should be pretty smooth. I will work on the nut. I will just check it to see if um, if it needs fixing. Probably do. So I I have this tool here with different thicknesses. Place one here. Uh, the height of it's a bit higher than uh, the first fret. When I adjust the nut, I just put that here to avoid filing too deep. I have this set of uh, nut files. They come with the width of the nut slot for each string. So I'll start with the thinnest, 010, which will go here. And I've learned that when you file the, the nut, you angle it down like this. If you do it straight, same uh, angle as the neck, you will create uh, an edge here for the string to, to rest on and it will break it more easily. So it's better that you have a slight angle downwards so the string follows the slope. It looks like it needs a bit filing to get a bit lower this slot. I think that will have to do for now. For lubrication of the nut grooves, I like to just use a piece of graffiti from an ordinary pencil. And I just um, scrape something from with a knife. And this is black, so it won't show on a white nut. It will become uh, quite dirty from doing this. So this is also, of course, to have the string run more easy through the grooves here, help it stay in tune. 
Dr. Doc's Axe Wax. Generously. Yeah. So I think I'm uh, soon about ready to uh, mount the neck to the body. I have received a brand new pickup from Mr. Mark Jones at Evil Sheep Guitar Pickups. He made this one tailor-made for me. I gave him some uh, tone preferences. And for this P90 I have decided to go with the 500k for the volume, uh, 250 for the tone. Uh, I have a, a 0 0.022 cap, some wire and the new output jack. Let's get to work! Okay, so this project is done. I don't know if you have watched all of the parts in this video, but uh, what I've done is uh, the neck feels very comfy to play now. Smooth fret ends and also I've adjusted some of the frets that were sticking out a bit, so um, it wasn't quite even. I have adjusted the truss rod. It was a bit too much relief um, that way, so I have tightened it a bit so it's more straight nice and low action uh, and the finish yeah i'm quite happy with the finish i ended up with two coats of uh, clear lacquer it's uh, probably a poly kind of lacquer uh, but it's it's fine it's a bit matte the guitar looks a bit like a cow the last bit is of course the pickup that is adding the pure magic to this the tones of this I um, gave um, Mark Jones at Evil Sheep the guitar pickups a challenge and uh, he really nailed it. I asked if he could uh, try to get as close as possible to the tones that I heard from uh, Jeff McElain on his uh, Les Paul with P90s and uh, I really liked the tones of his guitar in that video. So I asked Mark Jones if uh, could you please uh, try and uh, get as close as you can to the tones from, from him. And I think he really nailed it. Uh, of course it's my fingers playing now, it's my gear, I don't have a two rock uh, amplifier but uh, this is a Dumble clone, so uh, in that ballpark I guess. But um, anyways, uh, I used no overdrives today so it's just straight to the amp. Just a bit of reverb and tremolo. Um, I can't play without tremolo. But um, yeah, I really like it. And this guitar is kind of magic. Uh, just one volume, one tone, one pickup, no switches or whatever. It's just uh, from acoustic nearly. to a mean blues guitar. Mm -hmm. 
all in uh, just that volume knob and tone control. You can probably go to a very jazzy tone as well if you like. I am no jazz guitar player, so uh, <laughs> I'd leave it. But uh, yeah, it's the uh, most fun guitar I think I uh, have played. The simple design of it is just appealing. It just makes it so fun to play. The Epiphone Les Paul Jr. I guess is a quite a cheap guitar uh, compared at least to the Gibsons. I'm very impressed of the quality of this. Uh, just minor adjustments done to, uh, to the frets and uh, to have it more playable than straight from what I got it at least. Mark, thank you. That was great. I also got a set of additional magnets to uh, experiment with in this guitar. So uh, I will do that in my, one of my next videos. I can't remember what other types of magnets I got, but um, let's save that for the next video. I hope that was uh, also useful for you. It was incredible fun for me. Bye for now.